Good morning. All right, so I'm here in sunny, not so sunny Southern California. I'm in uh, Temecula and this is uh, episode two. It's October 1st, 2023. So I was watching a Brian Burke's video not too long ago and he said, YouTube is hard. And you know what? It's not so much that YouTube itself is hard, but definitely recording yourself is super tricky. I mean, I, in my day job, I get in front of people all the time, meetings, no problem, fire off crazy wit, go on forever, no problem. But once you hit record on the camera, funny things happen. And I got to do a zillion takes because I'm a crazy perfectionist. So this time I got notes and I'm just going to um, use them. And you know what? We're going to leave the flubs in. Let's knock this out in one take. All right. So I've got two large format 4x5 cameras, a 45G and a 45A. One of them is a monorail, the 45G, and one of them is a field camera, the 45A. Now they're both manufactured by Toyo, so they have similar characteristics in terms uh, of, the velo of the bellows. One of the pitfalls of owning a view camera is, you know what, they're, they're way old. Unless you buy a brand new camera, which I did, uh, or near new on my 5x7 Chamonix, the bellows are just gonna be old and uh, cracked and worn out. So my cameras, I believe they're manufactured probably somewhere in the 80s, and that puts them around uh, 40 years old. So it's just something that you gotta watch out for, and both of my cameras needed to be replaced because I stuck a flashlight in the bellows, and I promise you, if you do that on an older camera, it'll light up like a Christmas tree. And I did that one day, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been shooting with this. And really, the sh shooting um, was not a problem. I didn't notice any light leaks, but it was definitely time to replace the bellows. So, I mean, just a note, as you see this video, you can use the similar technique uh, on the monorail. And actually, the monorail camera I did second, it was a bit easier because you can take the whole bellows off, and then there's two frames front and rear. And those of you that own one will know what I'm talking about. But similar technique, but a whole lot uh, easier. Okay, so let's get into the actual bellows replacement process. Um, I looked around on the internet as I was trying to, to figure out if I wanted to do this, and I can only find a few pieces of information, mostly, mostly text in uh, large format photography forums, and everybody was sort of guessing on how to do it, but there was no definitive here is the step-by-step -step process. I did find one post with a bit of information that helped me along. Um, but the reason why I posted this video, uh, somebody noticed on Instagram that I posted a video of my bellows um, completion and wanted to know um, any tips I can give them on how to do that. And then somebody else asked the same question. So I decided to post this video because it took me a really long time to investigate, and figure out how to do this. And then ultimately I just ended up just winging it and jumping in. Um, so first I tried to find a repair shop on large format cameras and they don't exist, but somebody out there, I mean, you, you had to believe that somebody was gonna have the ability to repair or replace bellows. So believe me, I emailed a whole bunch of shops. Most responded that they weren't able to do it. I did find two and you know what, one of them uh, was the Mac group you know, on the East Coast, I think they're in New York, and uh, they actually repaired Toyo cameras. And they gave me a quote um, of about 350 bucks, give or take. And I'm not sure if that included the actual bellows. I believe that it did, but I'd be looking at shipping both ways. So it was around 400 bucks in order to replace the bellows. So that gave me a little bit of confidence. Um, and what I mean by that is if I was going to replace my bellows and I messed up, I knew that I had a backstop to send it off to the Mac group and they would fix it. But um, me being uh, bargain minded, I wanted to take a shot at replacing it myself. Not only that, when I replace things myself and, and you, get, you handyman out there know what I'm talking about, there is something to installing yourself. You do the steps all yourself, you're proud of what you did and if you mess something up, you'll just keep at it until you get it right. So I figured I would apply that same methodology and in installing uh, the bellows because honestly at the end of the day I thought that I could do a better job than anybody else could do as long as I understood uh, what I was doing. So uh, I purchased the bellows, uh, the bellows from uh, etonephoto.com. It's a website in China. Um, and China doesn't have anything to do with it. It's a nice website. They have a whole bunch of series. I would encourage you to go visit them and support them. 
they're manufacturing a lot of new items that large format photographers need. So if anybody's listening from that website, thank you and keep it up. I really appreciate what you do. Um, and, and I pinged them a couple times and they sent me a video on how to do this really fast uh, video, sort of a, a time lapse video. And it didn't cover all the things that I think that you'll need that I found that were pitfalls. And they didn't use uh, any adhesive, which I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Wouldn't you need adhesive? Now, to be fair, it probably would work fine without um, adhesive. And, and you'll see in the video what I mean by that. But um, they gave me a, a bit more confidence. They didn't really show the details that you need. But anyways, I appreciate the video that they um, sent me. And they offered to repair the bellows, but I didn't want to send my camera overseas uh, back and forth. I didn't know if customs would be an issue. So anyways, very nice website. Thank you very much for all your help. Um, I ordered the bellows. Um, I was able to search my camera and find the exact size I needed. And as I say in the video, it took a couple weeks to get there. The shipping was free. I'm not in a hurry on any of this, so it really didn't matter. Now, when I got the bellows, um, as I say in the video, very, very impressive in terms of quality, uh, dark black, heavy fabric material. It looks like it'll probably out, bo outlast both me uh, and the camera. Now the bellows themselves uh, was about $80 from this website, which I thought was very, very fair. And, and the rest of the stuff that you have to buy, um, the glue, the tape, um, the screws, which I'll get into, um, was about 30 bucks. So all in, I'm about $110 uh, into this um, repair. So uh, money, although I enjoy a good bargain, wasn't really the primary motivator for me doing it myself. Me doing it myself was the primary motivator because, um, if, you know, if you own a home and an installer comes to your house, and they, I don't know, let's say install a, a kitchen sink or something. And you notice later on that there's little things that you would have done differently. It just bugs you. So I'm not an expert installer, but when I do something, I will stick to it and do it to the best of my ability. And if I think it's wrong, I'll do it again. So I wanted to apply all of that to this uh, bellows install. Um, so I made a note here. I like that I can control each step. I just said that. Okay, so... I want to save you a bunch of anxiety and, it, well, let me back up. I had a bunch of anxiety and fear once I realized uh, what the problem with this install was. And it was a pretty big problem. So I'm going to take that um, fear um, and share it so that you don't have the same fear and anxiety. So once I got the front standard off and glued it and then tried to put the original screws back on, no matter how many times I tried, no matter how much I pushed, they just would not go back on. So um, I, I really considered giving up. I was gonna send the camera back to uh, the mat group and go ahead and spend the 400 bucks and then just write off the cost of the bellows. But then I realized, um, man, if I just had some screws that were the same size, but just a hair longer, maybe a hair thicker um, in width, I could probably solve this problem. So I got to looking around on Amazon, searching, searching uh, machine screws. And then um, I, I found two kits, which I bought uh, both of them just to be sure. And they showed up at the house. And then um, I tried several sizes. I honed in on the two or three sizes that I thought would work. And um, man, I, I just felt a whole bunch of relief when I tried a particular size of screw and it went right in, it bit and it screwed in. And as it was sinking in, I was like, oh man, that feels so much better. So anyways, that is the entire problem that you'll run into. At least I believe you'll run into it when you try to replace your own bellows if you don't order these screws ahead of time. And the nice thing about these screw sets, you'll see them in the video. There's only one set that I show, but each set uh, comes with probably, I, I don't know, like 20 or 30 different sizes. So both sets I now have probably 40 different sizes. And the 45G, uh, the monorail camera that I did after I did the field camera, used a different size screw because they have plastic frames. And I think there are more screws on that. But anyways, once I got through this field camera, it gave me the confidence to do both cameras. And now I have uh, both cameras done. They're going to last a whole, uh, whole bunch longer after this. And you know what? They're light proof. I did test both um, the monorail camera and the field camera, just so you know. Um, took it out in my front yard, 
set up both cameras and did an extensive test with a, a 120 film holder so I can shoot a bunch of exposures and they are light proof solid. So this technique works for me. Um, let's see here. I looked on Amazon about two, you got that. Um, the 45G, different screws, mentioned that. All right, so just a note on the um, JB Weld um, sealant, uh, the adhesive. Um, it was probably overkill. I think you can use regular adhesive, but something about the, um, the adhesive being black, I thought was, I don't know, that was good for a camera. I actually searched on Amazon, black um, camera sealant or something along those lines. This came up as the uh, first result. So uh, I'm not an expert on adhesive. This might be the wrong adhesive for the uh, job. It might be a bit uh, overkill and it was a little bit messy, but it wasn't too hard to clean up afterwards. But I feel that the, the sealant itself was easy to work with because it didn't set right away. Um, I think the instructions say it sets after about an hour and it really finalizes after 24 hours. So you have quite a bit of time in order to mess with the camera and get it all lined up and be able to screw in the screws and still be able to move it around. So don't panic uh, once you do that. But I believe that with regular adhesive, it would probably set a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna say that my um, serendipitous, um, maybe wrong adhesive mistake, which I now think is right, uh, really helped me. So. Uh, the video itself, um, this was shot several months ago, and to be honest, I wasn't really planning on posting it. I just wanted to record it for myself, maybe post it, maybe not, but the video is not that great. I shot uh, most of it with my iPhone initially, and then I put uh, my old ADD uh, Canon up on a tripod to my left, and then just recorded what I was doing. And if I got a video out of it, out of it and I could email it to somebody or post it in a forum, that was really my plan, but as I said in the beginning, um, I think that those of you that need new bellows, take a look at this video and you might appreciate it because uh, you'll understand that if you've been searching around, it, it, it should be um, really helpful. All right, so let's get into uh, the video and uh, there are a couple flubs in the video as well, but I'm gonna leave those in because I'm rolling with one take nowadays. So anyways, let's do that and you have a great day and um, ah, episode wise. I don't know how many times I'm gonna post, but I plan on continuing this. My mission really is to, um, I think to share and to become a giving member of the community. I've been in photography, I think I mentioned this in my first episode uh, since the 80s. Uh, long, long wedding career as well. So there's a lot of information that I think that I might be able to share. I'm not purporting to be the master of all knowledge, but I think that I have enough that I can give back and that's my plan. So if you could please uh, subscribe and um, share this, who knows? My mission is just to help as many people as I can. So that being said, let's roll the video. Okay, so I ordered the bellows for my Toyo 45A field camera from etonephoto.com. Took a couple weeks to show up, and when it did, I was pretty impressed. The fabric is very thick, dark black, very durable, and I think it's even better than the original bellows that came with the camera. The extra fabric here will come off, but you need that in order to install the frames. So let's take a look at my camera. It's about 40 years old, and the light leaks typically appear along the creases both the upper creases and the lower creases, and that is definitely where the light leaks are happening in my camera. All right, so the first thing you gotta do is remove the four screws on the front standard. And in order to do that, you gotta remove these little round leatherette things. I use a safety pin, the sharp end of that, to do that. Then you gotta remove the revolving back. And in order to do that, you gotta slide the upper slide up and the lower slide down. There's the lower slide there. Go ahead and slide it down and then the whole thing comes right off. Okay, so there's eight screws on the back. Take a regular Phillips head screwdriver and remove those. All right, so the front of the bellows actually comes off pretty easy. Just a little tug and it comes right off. Now you can see the residual adhesive on the front. Not a lot of adhesive on the front. There's the adhesive residual on the front standard and you can see where they didn't go all the way around with that. Okay, so the back is a bit trickier. You 
gotta stick a screwdriver in between the frame and the bellows and just twist a little bit and it'll eventually come right off. Now the back has quite a bit more adhesive on it. You can see the residual there on the back frame and on the back of the bellows. Not quite sure whether there's more adhesive on the back than the front, but that is definitely the case. Okay, so you got to pull the frames out of the bellows. So let's go ahead and take the front frame out first and you just peel it off, work it out. Not that hard. And then there's the front frame. You can see the residual double-sided tape that they used. And then you do the same on the back. And you can also see the double-sided tape that they used on the back. All right, so there's the back frame. And it's a little bit crooked. I corrected that manually. All right, so here comes the fun part. Now I took a screwdriver and just worked off all the residual adhesive from the frames of the camera and then the frames that go on the bellows themselves. Took a little bit, but needed to be done. All right, so then I flipped it over, clean side up of the frame, installed it in the front of the bellows. Now this extra fabric here, you gotta take a pair of scissors and just cut that out. Don't cut too much, but you'll see where to cut. And then you gotta cut sort of V's in the corners so that they'll lay together. So I did that. All right, now I ordered three millimeter double-sided tape from Amazon. And the three millimeters refers to the uh, thickness of the tape, the width, I should say, of the tape itself. And uh, I just rolled off a couple inches of tape there and then you'll install that tape right between the frame and the fabric itself and then lay the fabric right over the tape so it'll stick. And you gotta install several pieces and do it all the way around on all four sides of the frame. Once that's done, I noticed that the corners were popping up and they weren't laying flat, so I decided to use some uh, super glue here and make sure that the corners stay flat so I got a solid light seal. So I dab some on all four corners. You can see here, I'm gonna do this one corner right here. And then I use some tweezers just to press that down so that it stays flat. Once that's done on front and back, I took a look at the bellows. Everything looks good, nice and flat. Should get a very nice light seal. Everything looks really good, ready to go. Okay. so. In order to make this easier, you gotta pull off the front standard. In order to do that, you gotta remove the screws from the stop there. You'll see them, just unscrew them and then the front standard just slides right off. And then you go ahead and set the back of the camera aside. So I use JB Weld black silicone sealant as my adhesive here. So what I did is I laid a bead of sealant on all four sides of the front standard all the way around and I decided to do the standard and the bellows just to make sure there was enough sealant in the front because the um, front standard has some little dips and valleys in there and I just wanted to make sure there was enough sealant in order to make a clean nice light seal all right so it starts to set but you do have a little bit of time so don't panic so what I did is I stood up so that I could get a straight down look at it and line it up a lot easier. I looked straight down the middle of the camera and just made sure it was lined up. And then once it was, applied pressure. All right, so the secret to this whole thing is Phillips pan head machine screws, size number M2 times five. And I ordered those from Amazon. And then at this point, I reinstalled the four screws that I had taken out onto the front. And then I realized that there appears to be a little gap between the frame and the bellows. And, and it's sealed, but I just wanted to put some more sealant in there. So I put it on a toothpick and just ran it around the four sides of the front standard. And then let it sit a little while, took a flashlight, really carefully looked at it, made sure everything was done correctly, and it all looked good. All right, so I let that sit for a day. And in order to install, or reinstall, I should say, the front standard, you need to use a screwdriver to pry up a little flange. You'll see it when you do it. 
and you got to do both sides but just pry it up and then the the standard sort of slides right back on all right so we got the right side go ahead and do the left side you just got to slide the screwdriver in there and give it a little twist and then it just pops there it goes it pops right back on and it slides back up and down okay then you got to reinstall the stop using the same two screws check it out everything looks good make sure the lock still works and then the standard slides back and forth good to go okay so I used a shoestring here off of one of my shoes because when you tilt this camera back on its back the uh, the bellows will fall down and get in your glue and you don't want to do that so go ahead and finish tying this uh, shoelace here and then you'll see once we put the camera on its back it will really help keep it out of your way while you work putting the adhesive down on the back standard okay so got a flashlight in my mouth classy right all right, so then I put some sealant down on all four sides of the back standard. Okay, so once I let the bellows down, I realized that it wasn't close enough to the back. So I went ahead and um, pushed the uh, front standard forward a little bit to give it a little bit more room to come down without wanting to come back up. So that's what we're going to do here. Put it down a little bit. And then carefully line it up. Got a flashlight. All right, so it's lined up, put a little pressure on it. Then I held it together with my fingers. Stuck a toothpick in there. Watch me drop the toothpick here. Made sure that that hole was lined up. That was the reason for the toothpick. Now, I ordered also some binder clips, uh, binder clips, paper clips, and this really helped kind of keep everything, kind of kept everything together while I was working. So there you see the clips all the way around. Let that sit for a little bit. And then I put some sealant on my finger and just ran it around the edges, sort of like I did in the front. I'm sure it's all good, but just wanted to make sure that we're good to go. Used a paper towel, cleaned it up, and then took my screwdriver and reinstalled all eight screws. I took some alcohol, dabbed it on a little towel, made sure everything was cleaned up. All right, then I put the clips back on and just let it sit overnight. Okay, so the next morning, it's pretty much done. So now I gotta put the revolving back back on. It's just the uh, process that I showed you before in reverse. Slide the top back down. Make sure that's all on there correctly and then slide the bottom back up. There you go. Make sure that's all on there correctly and everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the ground glass that just slides a little bit and then just snaps right on. Everything is good to go. Everything looks good. Got a brand new camera.